This is a trimming and installation tutorial for universal tablet screen protectors from Green Onion Supply. The depicted product is our glossy anti-fingerprint universal tablet screen protector, but you may be able to apply these techniques to other protectors. We recommend that you watch the techniques first before you try to perform them yourself. Warning. Green Onion Supply disclaims any liability associated with the use or misuse of these instructions. Also, you should not apply excessive force to your screen at any time. It is not required for any step and may result in damage to your screen protector or your device. Let's begin with a quick overview. First, we'll list required materials and help you prep your screen and screen protector for installation. Next, we'll show you tracing techniques. Moving on, we'll show you a few techniques for cutting out the traced shape, as well as how to create cutouts for any front-facing cameras or buttons. We'll show you how to use the dust isolation sheet during installation of your trimmed protector. Finally, we'll show some techniques for last-minute trimming, as well as how to remove bubbles and dust. Materials. Let's go over the materials that you'll need during an average installation. You'll need to work in a bright environment preferably with minimal airborne dust. You'll need the contents of your universal tablet screen protector package. The screen protector, dust isolation sheet, and microfiber cloth. You will also need your device, some clean water or screen cleaning solution, scissors and or a razor styled blade with a ruler or other straight edge, a safe cutting surface, a flashlight or lamp, an ultra fine permanent marker for tracing, a rubber eraser, and cellophane tape, preferably of the wide variety. Step 1. Cleaning and Orientation We recommend starting your installation with a cleaning. Wash and dry your hands first, then bring your device to a bright and clean work environment. Wet one area of the microfiber cloth with clean water or a screen cleaning solution. Then use that dampened portion to clean the screen of all smudges and stains. Then, flip to the dry portion of the cloth and use it to dry the screen. Check for any remaining debris or smudges with lamp or flashlight and clean again if you find anything. Now, we'll explain the protector's construction. It has two protective films on it, a yellow film masking layer and a backing layer which is clear with grid printing. You can use your finger's pads to gently separate a corner of the protector from its films and get to know which side is the top and which is the bottom. The yellow masking film covers the top of the protector, while the grid printed backing film covers the bottom of the protector, which has the sticky glue that will attach the protector to the screen. If your screen is asymmetrical, you must trace on the yellow masking side in order for the shape to fit properly and not be upside down or backwards. Step 2. Tracing. We recommend that you use an ultra fine permanent marker when tracing on your protector. Some other pens and markers may work as well, but make sure that they're very fine pointed to allow for more accurate tracing. Note that the screen protector is designed for flat continuous surfaces, so in most cases, you should trace the protector to be a little bit smaller than the glass area of the screen. Our normal technique for tracing is to find the groove or crease between the tablet's glass screen and its metal or plastic frame. You can find this with your fingertip or fingernail. Once you place the film over your screen, you can press your marker into the gap and it will create an outline exactly big enough to fit the glass area of the screen. Remember that you must trace on the yellow masking layer. If you happen to make mistakes when tracing, simply use a rubber pencil eraser to remove it. We recommend that you align two edges of the protector with two edges of the tablet screen. This will reduce the amount of tracing and trimming you have to perform. You may also want to tape down these two sides so that the protector does not shift out of place during trimming. Remember that you must align the edge of the protector with the glass edge of the screen, not the edge of the tablet itself. Once you're all set up, trace all the corners and the other two major edges of the protector with the groove technique that we just showed you. You can then take off the tape and remove the protector from the screen. If you have a difficult time tracing the screen's major width and height dimensions, another option is to measure the glass area of the screen with a ruler or tape measure. Then, subtract half a millimeter from each dimension and measure out and trace a rectangle exactly that size onto your protector. 
Then, all you'll have to trace are the corners and the webcam or buttons. Once you have the general outline on your screen protector, try to compare it to the screen and make sure that it looks correct in all dimensions. You may want to use a ruler or tape measure to make sure that the protector will fit easily onto the glass area of the screen. Step 3. Trimming. Now that you have your outline, we'll need to cut it out. We recommend that you start with the longer sides first, before worrying about the corners or cutouts for the webcam or any face buttons. We'll show two methods for trimming. First, you can use a razor-style blade with a ruler on a safe cutting surface. Don't cut all the way through in a single stroke. A few lighter cuts will make the trimmed edge stick better. The second method is using a sharp pair of scissors to trim the screen protector. If you're using right-handed scissors and the yellow masking layer is facing up, we recommend that you trim clockwise around your traced shape. If the backing side is facing up, trim counterclockwise around the shape. Reverse these directions if you're using left-handed scissors. A third cutting option is to use a rotary paper cutter. Once you've traced the main sides, check to make sure that they fit over the glass portion of your screen. Trim them again if they're too large. Now, you can trace the corners of the protector if they're misaligned, and trim them off as well. We recommend using scissors. With the major outline completed, check the protector against the screen again and make any final adjustments that are needed. Let's deal with cutouts for the camera and buttons. Start by making sure the masking side is facing upwards, then mark where the front-facing cameras and buttons are located on the screen. The easiest method is to trace and cut out a rounded slot using scissors, as you see here. Other methods include using a hole puncher, particularly for webcams, or slicing out a hole using a razor and a cutting surface. Now that everything has been trimmed, perform a final check, focusing on corners and cutout alignment. Step 4. Installation. Now, it's time to install the protector. Start by cleaning the screen entirely again. Clean with a damp part of the cloth to get rid of smudges and stains, then clean with the dry portion to dry the screen and remove any dust or streaking. Check with a lamp or flashlight and clean up anything that you find. Now, peel the clear dust isolation sheet off of its yellow paper backing. Then, stick it onto the screen and cover it completely. Push out the bigger air bubbles that form to help grab any remaining dust. Partially peel one edge of the dust isolation sheet up from one edge of the screen. We recommend a side that has a hole or slot for a button or webcam. Use the peeled up flap to form a tight scroll that sticks to itself. Don't remove it entirely. Instead, just roll the scroll back to expose a few inches of the screen. Now, you can peel the transparent yellow masking layer off of the screen protector and set it aside. Follow up by partially peeling off a few inches of the screen protector's grid printed backing from the same edge that was exposed on the screen. Fold the backing against itself. Align the matched edges of the screen and screen protector, making sure that any holes line up with any camera or webcam that they were trimmed for. Once everything looks alright, allow them to attach. Alternate between scrolling up the dust isolation sheet and peeling off more of the screen protector's backing as the screen and screen protector continue to attach to each other. If you get any larger bubbles, you can partially separate the screen and screen protector and then smooth them down as they reattach to get rid of the bubbles. Continue this process until the dust isolation sheet is off of your screen and the screen protector is fully installed. You can then save the dust isolation sheet. Step 5. Fixing last minute issues. Now, check the attachment of the protector to the screen under a lamp or flashlight. Particularly check along the edges and corners of the protector. The largest issue will be bubbles. Bubbles have five major causes. First, air pockets, which can be pushed off the protector. Second, dust under the protector, which can be cleaned with tape. Third, an edge that was tweaked during trimming, which can be creased down with a fingernail run along the edge. Fourth, a misalignment, which can be solved with a reinstallation. Fifth, a bad trimming, which can be solved by trimming off the excess material. First, start by checking if they're just normal air bubbles. If they are, you can use your fingertip or microfiber cloth to push them off the screen towards the nearest edge. 
Some bubbles may also be crushed, where you use your fingernail through the microfiber cloth and smooth down the smaller bubbles instead of pushing them off an edge. Remember not to use too much pressure. For larger bubbles, you can also attach a piece of tape to the corner of the screen protector near the bubble. Use it as a tab to lift the protector apart from the screen at the bubbled area, then smooth it down as it reattaches. This should work on all clean bubbles. Unmovable bubbles that can't be solved through lifting and reattaching are often caused by the second issue, dust stuck between the screen and screen protector. Check under good lighting to be able to find the dust. Once you've found it, take a piece of tape. Attach it to the corner of the protector nearest the dust while leaving a bit of a tab that you can grab. Now, take a longer piece of tape. If you have wider cellophane packing tape, you can stick one end on your forefinger and one on your thumb, creating a U-shape with the sticky side facing outwards. If you're using thinner pieces of tape, an alternative method is to form a ring of tape around your finger or fingers with the sticky side facing outwards. Use the tape on the corner of the screen protector to partially lift the protector off of the screen. Then, use either your ring or U-shaped piece of tape in your other hand to grab the dust off of the screen and the screen protector's glue. Once you've grabbed the dust, you can lower the protector back down onto the screen and gently remove the piece of tape from the protector's corner. Repeat this process near any other corners where you find dust. If you find edges that look like they're within the glass margins of the screen, if they still bubble despite pushing them down and trying to clean them with tape, you can use your fingernail to try to crease them down. Simply run the edge of your fingernail along the very edge of the screen protector until it sticks properly. The fourth possible issue is misalignment causing edge problems. To solve this, firmly attach a piece of tape to the corner of the screen protector while leaving a tab hanging off. Use that tab to lift the protector entirely off of the screen. Then. Realign and install the protector again. Note that you don't have to use the dust isolation sheet for your second installation. Any dust that attaches during this point can be removed later using the methods discussed earlier. Make sure to check the edges and corners again and make sure that this time they are properly aligned. If you've already checked the other possibilities, yet still have issues with bubbles along the edges that simply don't go away, the last possibility is that the protector was traced and trimmed a little bit too big. In this case, first mark or note which sides and corners need a bit of trimming. Then, attach a piece of tape to the corner of the screen protector with a tab hanging off and use it to remove the protector from the screen. If you have a very clean and flat, smooth surface, you can lay the protector down onto this surface like we're doing here, even with the glue side down. However, if not, we recommend that you place the grid printed backing back onto the glue side to help minimize dust attachment. Now, you can use the previously mentioned trimming techniques to remove the excess material. You should start with the longer sides first. If you're using a blade with a straight edge, we recommend placing a bit of the masking layer over the protector's front while trimming. Then, trim off the excess material from the corners of the screen protector. Once completed, Check the protector against the screen to make sure that it fits. If it doesn't, mark the problematic areas and trim again. When you're ready, you can peel off the backing and install the screen protector. You'll likely have a bit of dust that needs to be cleaned off with tape, as we described earlier. Once you're done getting rid of all dust, bubbles, and excess material, your installation is complete. Thank you for watching. You can find out more about our products at www.greenonionssupply.com. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter.